and welcome to this video on the YOLO Box Ultra. In this video today, what I'll be doing is going over all of the functionality of the YOLO Box Ultra. I'll be going through all the various different modes and you can very much think of this video as a virtual manual for the device. And for those people who are thinking of purchasing it or have already purchased it and wanna know exactly how the device works, hopefully this video will be super useful. I've already done a video on all of the new features added to the Yellow Box Ultra versus the Pro. So if you're interested in that, check that out. There'll be a link in the description and you can find other videos on the Yellow Box Pro on my channel as well. So if we start firstly with the monitor mode of the Yellow Box Ultra, we go ahead and jump into this. And what you'll see here is the initial display that you're, you're given. It shows you, this is your program output here, and here are your various feeds along the bottom. Uh, I currently have two HDMI feeds coming in, which are two different cameras, so one here, and if I maximize the screen, you'll see it go into inception mode there. That is literally just the camera filming the screen for the, the purpose of this video. I've got a camera just connected to the back uh, or showing the back of the unit. So showing the different connections. So the four HDMI inputs here, I've got one spare that I haven't got connected at the moment. This lead here is connected to the HDMI out. So here is just a zoomed out view. So you can see I have a monitor connected here via that HDMI out, and that is just showing me my program feed. So that would be what would be going out over my live stream if I was streaming. And I always find it handy to have a second monitor so you can see exactly what the audience would be seeing and use the Yolo Box Ultra purely as a switching device. This third one here is actually plugged into a laptop. So I have a laptop feed here, meaning that I can show anything that I'm displaying on my computer. And then I also have, as you can see up here, this is a US, one of the USB-A ports. There's two of those on the unit. I have a old 720p webcam connected, which looks terrible, um, but gives you the ability to take in any interface you want over USB-A. And then down the front, there are actually two USB-C ports. One is for power only, but the other one is a data port. So you can connect a USB-C device and send uh, an input in over that as well, if you like. We obviously have the ability to add video sources. And if you connect anything, it will just show up automatically. But if we wanna go ahead and for example, add a video that is pre-recorded, we can do that and we'll select a couple here and you'll see that they will then pop up. Now these are preloaded on the SD card that I have inserted into the unit. And if I go ahead and take that out, you'll see that those two videos now disappear. One thing to be aware with this unit is the SD card goes in this orientation. I find it a little confusing because I'd want to put it in like that, but the same as with the Yellow Box Pro, it actually goes in this way. And once we insert it, we'll have to go ahead and add those video streams in again. And they show up down there. What's really handy with your streams is that if you want to get rid of them, you just long press, get a little trash can icon, and we can go ahead and delete them. We can also reorder them as well, however we want. So we can just hold and drag and drop and so when you're getting set up for your stream, if you want them in a certain way, we can do that. Now with each feed as well, we have the ability to change some of the settings on it. You'll see that there is a cog icon and on any video feed, we can select that and we'll get a number of different options. So we can flip them if we wanted to. Um, we can crop into them and we can choose exactly which part of the image we want to show. And that will crop in on the image. So you've got a lot of flexibility with each of the individual streams. And that has now shown up. There we go, as that cropped in version. And then following on from that, we can obviously add in other things as well. NDI streams, RTMP, SRT sources. Uh, we can add in still images. 
and even PDF documents, once again, if they're loaded in on that SD card. We can then also set up multi-views. Um, so if we want to show, say, two or three video feeds side by side, we can do that. And if we go ahead and select one, it then allows you to choose your source. So if we select, say, for example, this and this, and then we get the option of how we want them to be displayed. And we have lots of options here. So if I want to show a little bit more of one than the other, you can even change the color of the surround. And if we've got them the wrong way around, we can go ahead and swap them. So once we're happy with that, we select done. And then you'll see that that shows then as another source down in the selection here. And when we select that, it will display as we had it set up. Over on this drop down menu here, we select the quality of our input. So if our, this obviously depends on what your camera or device can output. But if you say, for example, you have 4K cameras that can output 4K over HDMI, you have the ability of selecting that 4K resolution. And then once again, if you're using a streaming platform that will stream up to 4K, you can pump out a 4K stream uh, from a 4K source. OK, so moving on to the menu along the bottom right hand corner here, we'll take them step by step. And the first one is the overlays menu. And this once again is pretty self-explanatory, but it allows you to add in or create overlays that you can then put on your video as you choose. So if we go for the classic lower thirds, there's a load that are already preloaded for you. And then once we're in the options, we have the ability to customize them however we want. So we can give it a name. And then we can change the name to whatever we want. Uh, and uh, obviously making those changes here it updates we can change the font the color we can add logos etc so you've really got loads of flexibility once you're happy with whatever you've done if you hit done that will then show up here in the overlay section and putting that on our feed is literally just a matter of tapping it and to get it off we tap it again so very easy to use. The touchscreen on this device is fantastic, very responsive, just like using a tablet or a phone. I really like it. And the, the fact that we can just kind of touch on and off however we want, really handy. Obviously the ability there, you've got loads of different things. So countdown timers, time overlays, all of your socials. We even have the ability to create video overlays. So if I go ahead and select one of my video sources, and I might wanna scale that down and just have that in the bottom hand, uh, right hand corner, for example. If I go ahead, that will then give me that in the overlays panel and I can just go ahead and select that so it can be still demonstrating whilst another video plays um, and just a matter of tapping that on and off as I want it to show. So moving on to the audio mixer settings now, this is one of the areas that they've upgraded on the Yolo Box Ultra. Effectively, what you can do now is you can take audio in from any device that you can connect to this unit, whether it's via HDMI or USB-A or USB-C. And that will show up as an independent source, which you can toggle on and off. And you can see here I have two HDMI connections at the moment, which are two cameras. They've both got built in microphones, so that's showing up. I have a webcam connected over usb a, and that is also showing off up and what I can do is toggle them on and off independently of my program and my monitor as well. So that's super handy. You've got loads of options within the audio. You have the ability here for AFV, which is audio follows video. So that means that once that source is selected, the audio will follow where the video is. And you can see as soon as I switch to HDMI 2 that becomes a live source if I switch away from it it therefore then disappears so the ability to toggle that on and as soon as you make that feed live for that audio source to kick in as well is super handy and then obviously when you switch away you might not want that 
uh, to remain on and so having that audio follows video mode is super handy for each individual source. With the audio mixer as well you've got the option to full screen it which is super handy if you've got multiple inputs it obviously can get a little crowded and scrolling up and down you might forget about a source at the bottom so the fact that you can full screen it and see them all there in one go is really handy. You've also got options here for the line in and the mic which are connected down the bottom here, you can adjust the gain, you can put noise reduction on for them, and you can even have auto audio fade settings as well if you want, so it will fade in and out as you select the, the source. So that's super handy for those people that are wanting to use line in and mic into the unit. Moving on now the, to the next option within the menu in the lower right, this is the scoreboard and this is obviously for people that are wanting to live stream and film sporting events, this allows you to set up the scoreboard however you like. This is just a basic option, but here, for example, we can add in our scoreboard here. We can drag it around wherever we want it. Um, so if we pop it down here for a second, we can increase the size if we like. And then obviously we can change the names of teams, uh, the scores, we can add a timer in. Uh, we can say what uh, period or half it is and we've got the option as well to change the styling of it so we can change the font the color the background the names of the team obviously we can add in even team logos which uh, is handy so for people that are looking to stream sports you've obviously got lots of options within here to show your scoreboard for all different types of sports in all different styles they do actually even have some examples here which you can see for different types of sports and different types of styles of scoreboards of what you can do and how you can get them set up so moving on from the scoreboard into the next option which is replay settings and once again for people that are live streaming sports this is likely to be of interest what this allows us to do is select from our video sources which ones we may want to replay so if we select for example our camera angles that are set up on our sports field and you can obviously select multiple ones. Um, but once we've selected those, we can go ahead and turn on replays and then go into replay settings. And it will allow us to show slow motion, show speeded up, set the duration of how long we want the replay to be, whether we want audio for the replay on or off. Obviously, if we're playing in slow motion, probably not. The resolution and frames per second. And we can then even add in things like branding, like logos and intros and outros that we often see in sports broadcasts when a replay comes on. So the ability to do those through these options as well is really handy. And once again, for people that are looking to stream sports, these are gonna be of great interest. Moving into the recording settings here, this allows you to set up the resolution of your recording and also do ISO recordings, so isolated recordings, and that is where you record each individual feed separately than your main program. So obviously the program feed is what the audience are seeing, but if you wanna capture each individual feed separately, and this is usually for people that are wanting to do post-production and edit the, the footage for other usage, maybe for social media or, or for a highlights reel, but the, the fact that you can do isolated recordings and capture each feed gives you a host of options in post-production here you set everything from frame rate to bit rate you have the option on the yellow box ultra of encoding in h.265 if you want and that's for recording and as we'll get onto in a little bit live streaming as well it allows you to set the recording limits of how long it will record for before it's saved and obviously if you're wanting to make sure that your footage is super safe, you want that to be a lower amount, you can set it to continuously. It allows you to set up the storage settings at the moment. I've only got SD card inserted, so it's only giving me that, but you can connect a USB drive over USB-C and record to that as well. So moving on to the auto switch options, this is really for people that are looking to stream and record themselves as well as operate the unit. So in order to do this, we just need to set it up. We go ahead and we select which video sources we want it to switch between. We select our duration that it will stay on each one. So for example, you might wanna have one as your main video source and so we might keep that on 
for say one minute. Um, let's set that up. And then our other one is a B cam, which we want to cut to for only 10 seconds. And we can set the options here of how we want it to, to be. So we can set uh, whether we want the order to be sequential or random and uh, whether we want it to loop or not. And then once that's done, if we go back and we put auto switch on, so once we're ready to stream, we maybe switch around, get in front of camera, hit our stream and we'd be good to go. And it's gonna switch between those two video feeds. It's gonna stay on HDMI one for one minute. And then after one minute, it's gonna to switch to HDMI two for 10 seconds. We've got the option here to have video follows audio as well. So depending on how we have our mic set up on those HDMI sources, you can have that toggled on or off. If you do want it to follow, obviously to the, the source that it's showing, you want that on. If you wanna keep your audio from only one source, then you would have that toggled off. Finally, into the settings of the unit, this allows you to change some sort of general global settings. The first one here is the video switching control and you can either have that from just a single tap or double click. And obviously if you're doing something that's pretty critical, you wanna make sure that the right feed is on at the right time. You might want double click set on because obviously then you can't accidentally press or brush the screen. We have to double tap to actually get to that, uh, that video feed. So that's an option there if you're very critical about what's being shown on your live stream. The next option here is how you want it set for when you switch to a video feed. So for example, I have the video feeds down here and that's set to pause when switching. So you can see as I start a new feed, it will start from where it was. It doesn't continue playing. Sometimes you want them to start again. So we would select resume first frame and pause when switching. So if I go back to that, it will start at the beginning and maybe you just want that video to continue playing, in which case you would have continue playing when switching and it will just jump in wherever it happens to be from once you started it playing. This, uh, this option here allows you to either have those videos looping or stop at the last frame. So when it gets to the end, if we select that, it will then stop. So this video here, uh, once it gets to the end of it, it should, if we go ahead and just go forward, it should stop and not continue playing. Video output settings allows you to change between 50 and 60 frames per second. This is where we select the USB-C out. So the default is for the USB-C is as an input. So if we were to connect a USB-C uh, video source, that would be an input, but we can select that to turn it to a USB out. So we can output video over that if we want to. We also have the option to flip uh, horizontally flip an image so it says when encountering the adaptability problem of horizontal flipping of the screen just turn on the switch so that's a, an option there if you're outputting by USB-C out and the image is the wrong way you need to flip it horizontally you can do it through that option there so this is the option here where if you are looking to stream uh, via NDI uh, you would toggle this on uh, it does require a license which you can purchase through YOLO Live so you do need to get in touch with them. But once you've uh, toggled that on, you can uh, select your resolution and frames per second on that. And then obviously select what you're gonna be showing over the NDI stream. So most likely your program um, stream and go ahead and toggle that on and off if that's something that you're looking to do. These options here concern mostly the um, transitions and the layouts. So here we can select um, what we want a transition between um, sources to be, whether we want just a straight cut, uh, we can add a fade in, for example. Uh, we can add wipes in and all sorts of different ones that you want. So depending on uh, the style that you're looking for, you can set the duration as well. Um, I'll just keep it on uh, straight cut. 
we can change the view down in this bottom corner here. If you've got multiple sources and you wanna be able to see them all, we can either select three in a row or four in a row. Obviously four in a row, they are smaller, so it makes actually sort of tapping on them a little bit more difficult. I prefer to have it probably set up as three in a row, but that's uh, user preference. Here we have our SD card and it will show us how much is on there. It will show us the various files. We can go in there and delete things if we want to. Um, this is recordings that I've made on the SD card. So you could go ahead and select that and delete it from the SD card if you want to. If you had a USB-C drive connected, for example, you can manage the storage on that through that option. Here we have the function for the controlling of the device via an app. Uh, this is still in beta phase and it tells you how to do this. Um, it's only on Android at the moment. You need to download the YOLO Live uh, from the Google Play Store and then you can control the unit. I've tested this a little bit and I would say, yeah, it's very much in beta stage. Obviously, the, the purpose of buying a unit like this is to be able to control it. Uh, via the unit, but they are looking at adding that functionality in, so that might be of use to some people. You can go ahead and reorder the bottom menu here to whatever suits your needs. So for example, if you're a sports person, the scoreboard and replays are probably gonna be quite important to you, so you might want them up the top, whereas if you're not doing that, you might wanna get rid of them because they're not particularly important, and so you can set those bottom menus up however suits yourself. And the final option here is for people that have a YOLO deck, um, the configuration of that, you connect that via the USB-A port and that will allow you to configure that if you have that connected. So if we go ahead and look at the live streaming options, this is how we set up a live stream. So we'll go ahead and if we wanted to create a new one, we would hit on this plus button here. We give it a title, date and time, and then we can create it. I've got one already set up here. Once we're in the interface here, it's very similar to monitor mode, obviously with the difference being of effectively, we are now ready to go live and stream. So we would select the platform that we wanna to stream to. Once we're done, we just would hit go live and then we will be live streaming on that platform. We then can operate obviously the unit as we would by clicking on whichever input we wanna show on our program at the time. And then down the bottom, we've got a couple of extra options now that we're in live streaming mode. The first one here is the option to invite guests uh, so we can bring people into our stream. And if we go ahead, it says up to a maximum five guests are allowed to be invited. USB input and animated graphics overlays, including web URLs, GIF images and countdown timers are not recommended whilst using the invite guest feature. And we can bring them in literally by sending them an email. We've got the option here to mute them uh, by default uh, before we bring them into the stream. And we have the option here of allowing them to, to join the stream or, or not. If we move along the bottom, we can see that here we have a comments menu. So if the streaming platform that you are using has comments functions, they will show up in this section here and we have the ability to display them on the streams so that they can be seen via the program feed as well. The other option you have in live streaming mode is to use the capability of network bonding within the YOLO Box Ultra. Now this is a paid extra that is available from YOLOcast uh, via subscription and it depends on how much data you want to use. Quick explanation of how network bonding works is effectively it uses multiple different internet connections to ensure that your stream is as stable as possible so it will use ethernet wi-fi 4g 5g etc and the sort of analogy for how this works is if you think of a horse pulling a cart without network bonding you'll have uh, your stream pumped over a single internet connection and we've all watched live streams that become choppy and slow down and effectively with that single horse pulling a cart if that horse gets tired and slows down then so does the cart with network bonding you're effectively having multiple horses pulling that cart and so if one gets tired and slows down the other two or three or however many you have will take up the slack and the cart continues on without losing speed and that's effectively how network bonding works so for people that want super 
uh, stable stream, something that if that's something that's really important to you, then obviously, it, like I say, it is a paid subscription model, but the ability to be able to do that and ensure the most stable and seamless streams uh, possible is a function now of the Yolo Box Ultra. And if you're prepared to pay for that, that's something that you can take advantage of. So the final option now is the new vertical streaming mode that's been added into the Yolo Box Ultra. And this is obviously aimed at people using streaming platforms like TikTok and Instagram. And as you can see, I've got the unit set up now in portrait mode. And if I go ahead and jump into the vertical streaming mode, you'll see here how it looks slightly different. Effectively, we have that menu now down the right hand side here and our video sources. And if I go ahead and rotate my cameras around in the correct orientation, and you can see now I have a vertical setup here and I can stream obviously in a vertical setup mode to whichever platform I want. If I just go ahead and turn the video preview off for a second, you'll see here we obviously have some apps and we already have preloaded Instagram and TikTok, which are, you know, sort of default vertical streaming platforms. We also have the option to sideload on some other apps through an app store. Now I haven't used this, um, but there is an app store on here. And if I go in, it does give me the ability to search for apps and find other platforms that will offer vertical streaming. I can go ahead and search for one there. Now we have pretty much all of exactly the same options in the vertical streaming mode as you do in the horizontal one. One thing that we do have is the ability to stream to two apps at the same time. So in order to do this, we select this option down here and we would then select our first app, for example, and then we would select our second one and we then have the option to stream to two apps simultaneously in that vertical streaming mode. If we wanna change that, we just go ahead and close it, and then we would click on that to open the app of our choice. So hopefully that video has been useful. If you do have any questions or comments on the Yolo Box Ultra, do drop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.